let us look at uh, matchings. Uh, this is one more uh, problem we want to consider in the graph uh, streaming uh, context. A matching is uh, basically a matching M uh, is basically a subset of uh, the set of edges such that no two edges uh, in in um, uh, in in the matching M share an endpoint. So let's look at uh, at one such uh, example. So so this is a matching. Uh, so this edge and this edge. N and now if you look at uh, uh, so so M is in this case M is equal to. Um, 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 4. Now if you think about it, uh, why is this a matching? Well, it is a subset of the edges and if you look at these two edges, they do not share an endpoint. The first edge has endpoints 1 and 2, the second edge has endpoints 3 and 4 and they do not share an endpoint and so it is a, a matching. Uh, Let us look at another example, uh, this one. This is another matching, but if you were to try and add one more edge, then it is no longer a matching. So, this is uh, not a matching. Okay. And typically, we uh, are interested in either maximum cardinality of the matching. So, you want ma matchings that are of large cardinality uh, or um, in the weighted setting maximum weight matching. So, for example, this is a matching, but this is a matching of just one with one edge and once you have included that edge, you cannot add any other edge. So, this is not a maximum cardinality matching. So, for, for this graph, the real maximum cardinality uh, uh, matching would be the following. So, here you include uh, we already saw this uh, 1, 2 and then 3, 4. Okay. But let us look at an example of maximum weight matching. So, for example, let us say that this is uh, 3, 4, um, uh, 5 and 2. Uh, let us make that a little bit interesting. Let us make that. So, now um, what is the maximum weight matching here? Um, if we include 3 and 1, uh, we only get a maximum weight of 4. If we include the edge 2, 3, uh, then also we get a maximum uh, weight of uh, 4. Uh, so, really the maximum uh, uh, maximum weight edge, uh, the, um, the, uh, the maximum weight matching is just that one edge uh, 1 to 3 and that will give us a maximum weight of 5. Okay. So, so let us see how we can um, compute the uh, maximum cardinality matching first. So, first we are going to focus on maximum cardinality matching. So, it is the unweighted setting. And we have to do this in the streaming uh, model. So, uh, as usual, we start with uh, the matching being the empty set, and then we ask, okay, how do we uh, compute the mat uh, the maximum cardinality ma matching? Now we look at edges one at a time, and uh, for each edge, we first um, uh, we check whether including the edge E into the current matching retains the fact that uh, uh, re retains the matching okay. uh, the prop the matching property. What is the matching property? No two edges in the matching should share an endpoint. Um, if that property is violated, uh, then you discard uh, the set e, uh, the edge e. On the other hand, if that uh, if by including E you, you get a new matching, then you simply uh, add that edge to the matching. So, M uh, you simply assign uh, M to M union this uh, edge E. 
So this is a very simple greedy uh, algorithm and um, this gives us um, uh, a good matching, but it is not the true maximum cardinality matching, it is only an approximation um, and uh, a simple uh, let us look at a simple graph where this algorithm will fail to create uh, to give you the actual uh, maximum cardinality matching. So, let us say the, uh, the graph is uh, um, of this form. You first get the edge 2 comma 3, then you get the edge uh, 1 comma 2 and then you get the edge 3 comma 4. Let us say you get the edges in this sequence, then uh, your m uh, after the first iteration will be the edge 2 comma 3 and then uh, any time you when you try to add, add the edge 1 comma 2 it will violate the matching condition because they share that ed, uh, the vertex 2. So, this edge 1 comma 2 will not be added then when we get the edge 3 comma 4 again we will uh, discard that edge as well because uh, again it is a shared vertex. Um, and so, uh, the, the algorithm will up output uh, a matching with just one edge, uh, but simply looking at this graph it is easy to see that the maximum cardinality matching is actually uh, these two edges 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 4. So, you get two edges in the matching. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, which means that um, we only could uh, get half the number of edges. And uh, as it turns out this um, uh, this algorithm is guaranteed to give you that sort of an approximation. So, two approximation mean which means that uh, the number of edges output by this algorithm is going to be uh, at least um, half the uh, number of um, uh, matchings in an optimal maximum cardinality matching. So, if the optimal maximum cardinality matching is say uh, 100, then we are guaranteed to get uh, uh, some number of uh, some number of matchings that is uh, sandwiched within this uh, region between 50 and 100. So, um, uh, so in this example the uh, maximum cardinality matching was uh, 2 and uh, we were uh, we we got uh, our algorithm out is guaranteed to output some number of matchings which is between 1 and 2 and in particular we got 1. So, <coughs> this is the um, maximum cardinality uh, matching and uh, now let us move on to um, weighted case. So, here now we are looking at uh, a weighted um, uh, uh, graph and uh, in, we are not looking at the cardinality, but we are looking at the maximum uh, weight matching. Okay, we want a maximum weight matching and the algorithm is a little interesting here. You start with as usual the empty uh, uh, matching and we look at edges one at a time and for each edge uh, we look at we, we collect the set of edges in the current matching. So, this m is the current matching that we have. <coughs> we collect the set of edges that uh, that have a, uh, a common endpoint with the current edge E is the current edge in our stream. <coughs> And uh, we ask if, if there are edges in the current matching that have a common endpoint with the most recent I mean the current uh, edge in the stream and we collect all those edges. And uh, note uh, the question is what is the cardinality of this uh, set C? Um, it must be at most 2 because the current edge let us say is E. Uh, and let us say it is between uh, this is this edge E between U and V, M is going to be a matching it is the invariant that is that this algorithm is going to maintain. And so, uh, so at best these two E um, uh, the set C could have one edge 
uh, incident at u and another in edge incident at v. So, the set C could have a cardinality of at most 2. Okay. And you look at that um, uh, set C and the weight uh, the w of c is basically the sum of the weights of those uh, edges. So, let us say this is 2 and this is 3 then w of c will be um, 5. Okay. We ask uh, if whether the new edge e the current edge e from the stream is, uh, is good enough for us to include in the matching because if we were to include e then we would have to throw away these two edges. So, before we include E, we want to make sure that it is it's, it's worthy of uh, being included. Uh, so, uh, because that will mean that the other two edges have to be thrown out, right. So, to do that what we are doing um, is, well the, your intuition might say that you just simply do that if this condition holds. Uh, if W of E is greater than uh, w of the, uh, the 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 edges in the set C, then E is good enough. Okay, but as it turns out, that has a small problem. We'll we'll look at that. Uh, so instead, what we are going to do is we are going to um, uh, not just uh, uh, look for this condition. We will in fact expect a little bit more out of this edge E. W of E must be greater than W of C times 1 plus some parameter gamma. Uh, this is this is basically rewritten in this form over here. Okay. So, if this edge E is good enough in this according to this uh, in other words if it if it obeys this inequality then what we do is we throw away uh, C. So, we remove C from the matching and we include E into the matching only if it is good enough. Okay. And uh, we do this for every edge in the stream and uh, we finally return the matching M. And uh, there is a little bit of analysis if you uh, with that analysis you can show and then with for the right choice of uh, the parameter gamma you can show that you, you this algorithm will actually be a 5.828 uh, approximation. Uh, so, now let us actually look at um, let us revisit this uh, this condition. Uh, okay. We why did we even have to add this 1 plus uh, gamma in uh, why not just include an edge uh, whenever it is better than the current uh, competing uh, set of uh, ed edges uh, the set C. Uh, let us think about it a little bit um, let us play with an example. In if you look at this example you you just have uh, your input graph G is a weighted graph that has n vertices and the edges go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 and so on. And the the weights are uh, 1 plus epsilon, um, uh, 1 plus epsilon, 1 plus 2 epsilon and so on. Uh, you know, so, in, a, in general if you have a, an a, a, a vertex i and i plus 1 the edge between them has weight 1 plus i epsilon. Okay. Now, uh, let us uh, let us suppose we uh, we use this condition w of e is if it is greater than w of c then let us say that is all we have. Okay. So, and let us say this the uh, we get the edges in this sequence. First we get this edge, second we get oops second we get this edge and so on. Okay. So, what will happen is the following we will first include this edge. So, in the matching okay. and then when edge 2 comma 3 comes we will throw away this edge and we will then include this edge and then we will throw away this edge and we will include the next edge so on and so forth. At the end we would have thrown away all the edges except the very last edge. Okay. So, under this condition we will get a matching of weight uh, 1 plus n minus 1 epsilon um, as the uh, as the maximum weight. But let us actually look at this a little bit more um, uh, carefully. The, the best thing the, 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 the highest 
cardinality, I mean uh, not cardinality sorry, the, um, the maximum weight matching is uh, can actually be a lot higher. It can include this edge, the previous edge would not be included, but uh, ev basically every alternate edge can be included. And uh, let us say this edge was included and this one was not included and let us say this one was not included, but uh, this one could have been included and so on. Every alternate edge could have been included. So, um, the actual uh, maximum weight car, uh, maximum weight matching is going to be much higher than what the algorithm actually will output. So, that is uh, output under this condition. So, that is why uh, we need this um, this gamma ok. Um, okay. So, that is uh, that is um, that uh, that is what we what I would want to discuss about uh, um, uh, matching where we have one last uh, notion that we want to compute using um, uh, in the gra in the streaming model. And we'll do uh, this is basically random walks, and of course uh, we've studied random walks um, quite a bit in this course. And uh, you may un remember, recall that the random walks are actually useful to compute something called the page rank, which um, is uh, measures the importance of vertices in uh, in a in a in a graph. And typically, this is uh, what uh, uh, search engines use. To, uh, com to to measure the importance of web pages in in the internet. So, uh, random box in that sense tend to be very very important and fundamental to the business of uh, search engines. And um, uh, in fact, it was it is an algorithm uh, that was invented by the founders of Google uh, and which, which one of the key uh, concepts that um, uh, made their uh, uh, business so strong. So, it is a very important uh, notion of random walk, uh, the notion, the random box notion. And uh, the question now is, I mean if you if you have the entire graph, it is easy to compute a random walk, but if all you get is the graph in this sort of a stream, you get one edge at a time in some arbitrary order, uh, then things become a little bit uh, tricky. So, how do you compute the random walk? Um, and this is actually an example where your algorithm uh, in for, for anything useful to be computed, one pass is not enough. You will have to actually do multiple passes. So, one pass is simply one for loop over all the edges in the graph, but can you uh, the, the import, uh, to solve a problem like the random walks problem, one pass is not enough, you will need multiple passes ok. Um, and uh, what is a random walk? Well, you start at some uh, vertex say V 0, um, considering all of its neighbors, you choose one neighbor uh, uniformly at random, you go to V 1, uh, from V 1 you, uh, you have a bunch of neighbors, you go to V 2, V 3 and then let us say um, uh, back to uh, V 1, but just to uh, uh, just to sort of uh, note that this was the vertex visited fourth, we are going to just sort of for our random walks purposes uh, label this vertex again as V 4, then we go to V 5, V 6 and then come back to this vertex. Now, we call it V 7, then V 8, V 9, uh, V 10 and come back and call it V 11 and V 12 ok. So, this is an example of a random walk. And uh, so, let us set up some basic uh, notations. Suppose we start a random walk at a node uh, u ok. Uh, the distribution now let us say we allow that random walk to make this uh, this walk and we will allow it to do t steps ok. After doing t steps uh, it is uh, this random walk is in some location and you can if you think about it, it is actually um, uh, the location is a is a random variable. It's, uh, it is it can be one of um, many nodes. So, in this example that we saw after 12 steps we reach 12 uh, v 12, but uh, if, the, if you were to run this random walk again maybe it reached uh, it would have reached this vertex or maybe it would have reached this vertex or this vertex um, or it would have come back to v 0 itself. Uh, there are variety of possibilities and for each of these possibilities there is a probability associated with 
uh, you know, after 12 steps, uh, what is the probability, you can ask what is the probability that it will be, the random walk will be at this vertex after 12 steps, uh, what will the probability of the random walk reaching this vertex after 12 steps, that is some another probability right. And that is basically a probability distribution and that we denote by mu t of u, it is uh, the distribution of the random walk after t steps, okay. And now uh, essentially when you run a random walk for t steps, you, you, you are basically sampling from this distribution, okay. And um, uh, so, um, so now let us look at how we can find mu t of u. It is actually quite easy when you have t passes, right. Uh, in the first pass you uh, basically let us say you start at u, in the first pass you look at all the neighbors of uh, of u and then um, at, after seeing all the neighbors you pick one of the neighbors uniformly at random, okay. So, at the end of the first pass you will get the first uh, random walk step, uh, seems a bit wasteful, but still after t passes uh, after one pass you can get uh, you can make one step in the random walk. Let us say u is nothing but your, the uh, zeroth uh, element from v, uh, uh, v 0 we let us say after the first pass we have gone to v 1. Now, in the second pass uh, you look at all the neighbors of v 1 and simply choose one of them uniformly at random you will get to the second location in the uh, random walk uh, sequence v 2 and so on. So, you can do that for t, uh, t steps and you will get uh, mu t of u, okay. So, this is uh, pretty uh, trivial. Uh, but that is pretty wasteful and uh, we want to do it better and in particular uh, what we can see is we can actually f we can actually sample from mu t of u using not t passes, but rather just square root of t passes. Uh, and, uh, and the idea is to uh, try and perform square root of t random walks in parallel and somehow stitch them together. Uh, so, let us actually look at um, uh, the algorithm. Um, uh, so, so, for simplicity to just focus on the um, uh, on the concept rather than the details, what we are going to do is just uh, look at a simplified version of the algorithm. It is not going to be complete, uh, but we are going to just um, try and understand the concept behind this. Okay. So, what we are going to do um, let t, uh, so what we are going to do is just uh, um, uh, run this uh, algorithm uh, for t rounds, okay, t passes, uh, square root of t passes rather sorry, square root of t passes. So, uh, but th what we are going to do is for every vertex v, uh, we are going to compute t v. What is t v? T v is a node sampled from mu square root of t of v. So, if you start at v and you run the random walk uh, for uh, square root of uh, let us say square root of t steps, okay, then you will get uh, you basically sample something from mu t of uh, mu of uh, mu subscript square root of t of v, okay. Um, but we will do we will do this Im importantly we will have to do this for every uh, vertex v. Okay. So, uh, remember we have uh, at our disposal some uh, O of n space. So, with just constant space we can um, do one random walk starting at one of the vertices, but since we have uh, O of n space we can actually uh, do n parallel random walks um, and for each one of them uh, uh, we do it square for square root of t passes. So, we will get for each one of them you will get a square root of t length uh, random walk. Now, the important thing is to somehow stitch these square uh, um, these random walks to create um, a random walk of length uh, t. So, essentially uh, what happens is the following. So, uh, from one of the vertices say let us say this is the uh, u vertex u and let us say this is um, and, and this is u um, 
So, let us say this is a set of all vertices from u, u, um, you get t of u, this is basically uh, square root of t length uh, uh, random walk uh, starting from u. Similarly, uh, we would have done this for all the edges. Okay. So, from t, t u is basically again one of the vertices in the in the graph. So, let us say that is nothing but uh, say v 1. The thing is this, we also have computed t of v 1. So, what we can do is we can take this random walk and stitch it with this random walk, we will get a random walk of length 2 times square root of t starting from u. Okay. And we can continue this. So, now t v 1 may, may be that is nothing but uh, this vertex v, uh, uh, v 2. Okay. So, then we can take this and stitch it with the rest and then you will get uh, a random walk of length 3 times uh, square root of t. Now, if you take square root of t such uh, um, if you do continue to do that you will get square root of t such random walks each of length uh, t uh, square root of t stitched together you will get a t length random walk. Okay. And um, uh, so, just by stitching these uh, short walks we will be able to um, perform uh, we will be able to compute a uh, we will basically be able to sample from mu t starting from u. Okay. This is a t length uh, random walk. So, this uh, requires um, I mean now the, the issue is this. So, now if in so doing if we end up uh, so, let us say this this ends up in a location and it happens to be again v 1 we are in trouble because we have already used uh, the random walk starting from v 1. Okay. So, this that is a little bit of a problem. Uh, so, that is why in this algorithm what we are doing is uh, we are actually this this line represents the, the stitchings that happened, but um, if, as we are trying to stitch we should be going to distinct vertices and collecting uh, short walks from there. If, if that is somehow not distinct, uh, we will be running into some trouble because we cannot reuse the same short walk twice. Um, so, that will be an issue which uh, there is a little bit more work that can be done to avoid that issue. Um, essentially by avoiding all of this uh, you will I mean by, by overcoming those uh, challenges uh, what we can say is that this problem can be solved with a space of O of n plus t uh, requiring at most O of um, square root of t passes with high probability. And so then this, and then you, you can use these random walks to then compute the um, the, the page rank. Um, so that uh, so so just to conclude, um, so today we have uh, looked at graph streaming uh, algorithms. Uh, we've looked at a variety of algorithms, uh, starting from very basic things like um, testing for connectivity, minimum spanning tree. And uh, then we looked at some way, uh, some non-trivial concepts in graph algorithms uh, um, like graph uh, sparsification, uh, random walks and things of that nature. And we have seen how uh, even in the sort of restricted model of streaming, uh, we are able to compute these concepts uh, reasonably well. Um, so, with that uh, we will conclude our lecture on uh, graph streaming.